Okay, welcome to the Hangout Live. Uh, like and subscribe, that would help. Welcome to it. Appreciate you being here. We have a lot of Broncos news to get through here today, so I'm glad you're with me. And of course, in Hangout Live, it is all about you. So whatever comments you want to throw out there, we'll get to and read them, react to them. And I, I'll just say it's an odd day for me personally, as our house did go for sale officially today, the for sale signs out there. And I, I am at the house, but it's in between showings. So I do got to wrap this up probably a little bit after five o'clock or so. We'll see how long we can be here, but we got some people coming into the house. So I got to get the heck out of Dodge. So odd, odd day, but I do have a, a pocket of time. So I'm happy to talk to you. Um, and I can do Hangout Live basically from anywhere. We want to thank Ed Pray the Real Estate. Ed is the man, and I'm working with Dom and Abby and Ashley, and his team is fantastic. So um, there's interest in the house right away. We'll see if there's any offers. We actually have another place picked out that we'd like to go. Um, just got to time it out, see if everything works out. Hopefully it does. So I can't give you a stronger endorsement to buy or sell your home than to literally use the guy that I'm talking about. And it's happening right now. So Ed Prather, my guy, check him out at edprather.com. Okay. We have news about the Broncos. Um, this is from field Yates, more cap space for Denver. The team did a simple restructure of the contract of Mike McGlinchey creating another $11 million in room. Uh, I'm just going through this. So he's, uh, Field Yates is reporting on Tim Patrick that we knew. Tim Patrick's deal with the Broncos drops his base salary from $9.5 million to the league minimum with $1.205 million in upside and another $170,000 in per-game roster bonuses. This creates eight million in cap space, so you 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 get kind of lucky there. He's willing to come back on a prove it to me one year deal. Kind of can't say no to that. That's a tremendous savings for the Broncos. They redo McGlinchey's deal, creating a restructure of the contract of Mike McGlinchey creates another eleven million dollars. Uh, in room. So McGlinchey is open to it. They have released Chris Manhurts. So he just gets cut. That opens up 2 million in cap savings. So, wow. So in total, the Broncos, I'm reading Zach Stevens of DNVR. Good job, Zach. The Broncos have created over 20 million in cap space by reworking Tim Patrick, restructuring Mike McGlinchey, and letting go of Chris Manhurts. This is how you do it. So you got some dance partners here with McGlinchey and um, T Tim Patrick. So you don't have to cut the guys if they're willing to do a deal with you. So when this whole thing came up with Russ and, you know, we wanted to let go of your injury guarantee in 2025, think about that for a second. Think about how much drama that caused. We want to redo this deal with this injury guarantee for 2025, and Russ wouldn't do it. Tim Patrick's taking a gargantuan pay cut. Mike McGlinchey's taking a haircut to stick around. Y you weren't asking for less money for Russ. It was his injury guarantee. You were still going to pay him for 2024, and you were just trying to Say, hey, listen, man, we don't want to have to guarantee 2025 if you get hurt. It really wasn't that big of an ask, all things considered. And it wouldn't set some sort of bad precedent for players in the future. Because who are we talking about? I mean, this is the upper 1% of the NFL. So to think that this was some sort of major insult or thing to Russ, when you see what happens to other guys, you know, it's kind of ridiculous. Uh, I'm just looking for more news that's coming out here. Okay, so that's the latest. 
So, again, to recap, Simmons gone, Manhurt's gone. Oh, and they re-signed Quinn Bailey, too. Here, let me get to uh, Cliss on that. Uh, let's see. Quinn Bailey news. Hold on. Okay. They re-signed backup guard offensive tackle Quinn Bailey a couple of days ago. Just finding out now, but a couple of days ago, he got third year minimum 1.055 million in lieu of RFA tender. He's been with the Broncos since 2019. So sixth year with the team, lots of practice squad time early played in all 17 games. So they lock up you know, a, a reserve guard for a million bucks too. Doing business, baby. This is how it's done. This is how it's done. Okay. And we'll see what other news comes out. So obviously they're, they're wheeling and dealing here. Um, and I would expect some sort of news on Jerry Judy at some point and some sort of news on Cortland Sutton. Mel, you're disappointed. Uh, disappointing show today on altitude support, basically totally ignoring the trade deadline, the NHL trade deadline. It, it came and went at one o'clock. Mel, no, no offense, Mel, but we talked about what the abs were doing. We had a report from the morning skate. We mentioned multiple times who's on the ice for the abs. I, I'm not sure what else you want us to do. We we did a ton of hockey coverage yesterday. There was other breaking news that happened with fourth line guys. Um, we talked to and we reached out to a couple people today that just didn't get back to us, or we would have done more. Wait a second, Kim, where? What's going on? Oh my God, we have such drama here at the house. You can't believe it. I have good news to report because I got to admit, I was a little bummed out going in because of something personal I was not going to mention. All right. Where was he? Hold on. I'm on my podcast. Where was he? Are you coming on to the podcast? Oh, my God. This is the first. Ross was at the neighbor's house walking around. I've been calling him, looking for him. Which neighbor? Two houses down. And I saw him that way, that way. And I saw him when I was looking around and I called him and he very cautiously came back and then I played his toy and then he ran into the house. <laughs> Unbelievable. In the front, he was just in the front yard. Yes. Oh, you deserve a medal for finding him. <laughs> well, you must feel good, right? So you used the, he was in the, he was just sit, sitting there in the front yard. Wow. Holy cow. Well, that, first of all, there's my wife on the podcast. That's a first. We're doing work in the house. The house is spectacular, but there was one more thing that just needed to be done. And um, we have two cats, Ross and Rachel, that my younger son named. And Ross got out the front door. And you turn your back for a second. And Ross is not a smart cat. OK, and we do not let the cats go outside. Ross slipped out one other time and he just kind of stupidly ran away. He didn't know how to come back to the house. Glam, yeah, the cat we had before, we would like go out into the yard, walk outside the fence. I mean, and he would always come back. Ross is an idiot. We love him. We love Ross the cat, but he is not a bright cat. And so he runs out of the house and he just doesn't know where to come back. And he was out of the house for a chunk of time. So that is amazing. My wife 
Great job by her. Cause I was, I was leaning down underneath a dumpster behind the Walmart near our house, because that's where, when he escaped, he went the last time. And, um, my wife got him back. My wife found that's actually amazing that she did that. That's incredible. So that, uh, that actually does make me feel much better. I guess I love the stupid cat. You know, I don't know what to say, but it's just, it's, it's, you know, how far could he have gone? I get it. But like, you know, he could get run. Uh, she found the cat. There's, 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 there's the cat found. So the irony is we got to stick him in a box cage carrying case. Because we have other people coming to look at the house. So, Jesus Christ. All right. Ross the cat. Sorry to interrupt the podcast with that. But, uh, all right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Uh, what are the cap? Uh, that's a good question what the cap number now is. I'm not quite sure. Let's see if we get some more information on that. Uh, let's see. Well, I don't, I don't have information on that now, but they're getting there. Well, don't forget too. not only do you have to be under the cap, you have to give yourself enough, enough room to sign your rookies or whatever free agents you want. So you may want a free agent or two. You can't do probably a blockbuster deal. So yeah. Yeah. You got it. And I don't know what they're going to do with Russ's contract. And they're probably trying to figure that out now. Are they going to go heavy, like 50 million this year and 30 something next year? Or are they going to split it up um, a little bit more equally? So don't know. Good question, though. But I, uh, I'll try to do some digging out, try to figure it out. Uh, at Mel, there wasn't really any news today outside of Myers getting traded for a pick to Anaheim. All right. Well, there you go. Guess that's your feeling, DMAC. It came and went. No talk about what happened today. Mel, come on now. Uh, Vegas got... Oh, so, Mel, you're all upset about this stuff. All right. Okay. All right. Well, listen, Mel, we did talk about what happened with the abs. The bigger news was yesterday when we talked a lot about it. Um, but we did talk about it today. We didn't go through the entire NHL. We had... I, I I feel good about what we did with the avalanche today. Okay. I do. I really do. Um, cat. Yeah. I got two cats. I just told the cat story. Glam. Yeah. Yeah. Our, our son, when he was seven years old, our older son is now 24. Got to name our cat. We had who passed away sadly. And he was into Pokemon. He was seven. And a character in Pokemon, the cat character, is called Glam Meow. Glam Meow. Glam Meow. And so we had Glam Meow, who we called Glam or Glammy. And we love Glam. We love that cat. That cat was awesome. Cat was a little skittish, a little scared, but he would cuddle with you and wanted to be around you. Wasn't very bold or brave. He loved rolling around the grass. The, the cats we have now are idiots. But I guess we love the cats, too. Uh, here we go. P. Watt seems so much more mature than 21. Nice interview earlier. Matt, totally agree. It's great to have Peyton Watson on. I thought he was terrific. I thought he was absolutely fantastic. Let me see if I can do something here. Peyton Watson. This might uh, change things up just a tad. Uh, Peyton Watson. Yeah, here we go. Oh, I don't have that. Oh, eh, well. He was great. Payne Watson was great. I knew he would be great, and he was great, period. Great young man. With the hockey, please stop with the Landy stuff. I love him, too, but he's not coming back. That is, uh, I, I think that's true. Yep. Oh, Mel, you're so upset. The Avs aren't beating Vegas now. Oh, come on. Okay. Let's just see how things go. We we talked extensively today how there's five new players for the Avs on the night with the return of Val. Trennan, uh, Middlestat. I'm going to forget a name here. You're going to kill me. Walker. 
Oh, my God. I'm forgetting one name. Hold on. I'm forgetting a name because I forget names sometimes. Um, middle stat walker, Trenton Duhame and Nachushkin. Five new players. Uh, okay. You didn't say one word about the most important move, Hurdle to Vegas. All right, well, you're okay. Who would you put your money on to win a chip this year, Nuggets or Avs? Oh, the Nuggets by far. Way we got a the abs just added five. Well, I mean, they get Nachushkin back, but they bring in Parisi. So let's throw Parisi in the mix. Nachushkin returns. Duhame, fourth line guy, Trennan, Walker, Middlestat. I mean, you're talking about um, if you count Nachushkin in there, six new players. Well, that's a lot, man. I mean, you only have, you know, 18 players plus two goalies that can be on the ice at any one time. And you got six new. I mean, you're replacing 33% of your team in one fell swoop. The Nuggets aren't. The Nuggets did nothing at the trade deadline. And they just beat Boston. Oh, um, no, it's not even close. Listen, I'm glad the Avs are doing some work. I'm glad they're not giving up on this. And, and I guess they're okay at backup goalie. I guess they're going to go with, Ananin or, I mean, perhaps Prozvitov. That's your backup goal. You're really riding Georgie. I would expect tonight to be interesting, to say the least. I wish d wife hosted this show instead. Oh, well, you know she does love the abs. You got me on that one. Smoky Hill versus Valor. Go public school athletics. I got a, a note from Brock Heward today saying, go Valor. <laughs> uh, you know, in my opinion, if we're going to go down this path just quickly, I think the private schools should just have their own league. That's it. You want to have a private school. You want to pay coaches more than public schools can. You want to have your own facilities. You have a completely different set of rules than everybody else. You should just play against yourselves. I mean, the state hockey championship was Valor against Regis. Okay. And I uh, boo-hoo if there's not enough private schools to compete against. But, I mean, that's my opinion. That's where I'm at with it. So, I don't dislike Valor. I don't dislike Regis or Ken or Colorado Academy or any of the others that are around, but I, I just think they have a crazy advantage over public schools. But, hey, it'll make uh, Smoky Hill beating Valor all that much sweeter. So hopefully my buffs win. They have never won a state championship. Um, Anthony Harden's a great coach. He's a good friend of mine, and I'll be keeping tabs on that. I might, I got to figure that out. I might even go... And watch the abs. I got to figure it out. It's being played at the Denver Coliseum tonight. So we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. But go Buffs. And then Eagle Crest is playing Thunder Ridge, I believe. And the right. I mean, if we got Eagle Crest and Smokey for the ch state championship, are you kidding me? That's outrageous. Uh, where's Al? Alfred Williams? He's on um, KOA right now, I believe. Exactly. Your wife cares about the abs deeply. She sure does. You're not wrong about that. You know, I've been to like every abs game for, you know, I forget it. Uh, Nuggets showed last night. Shaq, Charles, TNT, love the Nuggets. They do. You know, those guys are not as influenced by bigger agendas. They're not. They don't care. Uh, they are strictly about basketball. Um, their show isn't predicated on pushing some sort of East coast agenda. All those guys make so much money. They're not beholden to anybody. Um, they they've got the best show. So they're just, I, I believe they're just more honest. And your best guess, do you believe the Broncos get a quarterback or 12 or lower? They should, but I suspect they won't. If I had to 
guess on it. I will say they pick up sort of a Sam Darnold guy, Brissett, something like that. And they probably draft a quarterback in like the third round, unfortunately. And that's their plan. And I think Sean Payton says, I know quarterbacks better than the rest of you, and I'm not going to overspend. And I think Sean Payton has just his own wacky philosophy of how to do things, and he'll convince George that you won't have to twist George's arm. He'll be fine with it. And I think Greg Penner is a great guy. Um, I've let my opinion be known. But at the end of the day, you're going with Sean Payton and how he wants to do things. So I think Sean will feel like he's a genius and he will get somebody. Maybe that kid out of um, out of Tulane, maybe Milton out of Tennessee, who'd be like a T Taysom Hill sort of guy, maybe. I don't know. And, and then you, you know, you get Brissett, Darnold, Ryan Tannehill, somebody you're getting for, you know, probably what, seven to $10 million a year, which is still a lot, but it certainly isn't a break the bank sort of salary. Like most quarterbacks are getting. And they say, well, that's our bridge. We're going to go with, um, Tannehill. He's going to be our vet guy. We got Stidham here too. We got our guy. We drafted in the third round that we probably don't give a shit about all that much. And then we got the new G and, you know, we're going to build around that. And with our first round pick, we're going to get um, probably a, a, a pass rusher or Brock Bowers. If he falls tight end, something like that. So that's my guess on what the Broncos will do. It's certainly not what I would do. And if they are more aggressive and move up for a quarterback, if they move up for a quarterback, you won't hear somebody singing their praises more than me. You will not because I'll know they're serious about that guy. They love that guy and they're going to be committed to that guy. All of those things need to happen in order for it to work. Let me get the news because um, I know we got some new people just signing in here. Uh, Pratt. Yeah, Pratt. There you go. That's the kid from Tulane Pratt. Um, man hurts. Let go. Simmons, of course, yesterday, let go. Quinn Bailey signed to a one-year deal as a backup a couple days ago. Restructured Tim Patrick, minimum vet salary, one-year prove-it deal. Uh, and restructured McGlinchey. And sometimes restructuring is fine. Like, you know, you know you're, you're cool to, to get a restructure because you get a lot of money up front. So there you go. So guys redo deal. It's not an insult for management to go to your agent to rework your deal. It happens all the time. This victim mentality of Russell Wilson is ridiculous. I get it. It hurts. Man hurts. Just got cut. Tim Patrick is working for a, fraction of his contract who knows what's going to happen with Cortland Sutton Justin Simmons just got bounced he's never going to make 14 and a half million dollars again that's that's money that's gone Russ was upset about guaranteed money being on the chopping block for 2025 I've never heard of he should have in a heartbeat said, yeah, I get it. I want to be here. If Russell Wilson really wanted to be here, he would have understood the situation. He would have understood it. They would have reworked the deal and he would have been like, yeah, we haven't won here. I get it. I want, I really do want to be here. It's not setting a bad precedent. Who are you setting a bad precedent for? Other $40 million a year quarterbacks? Oh, I'm I'm really glad you're standing up for, you know, the guys making $40 million a year. Thank God they have a representative, Norma Ray. Okay. 
Uh, quick question. Did Harry Gustin do a decent job on your lawn? Always rooting on Colorado high school players. Got those uh, Noah Syndergaard locks going. Oh, you looked up my guy, Harry. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, Harry, if you missed the story, we had Peyton Watson on. And Peyton, I asked Peyton, I said, well, what did your parents do to make you accountable and uh, mature you up? And he goes, well, first of all, I just love basketball. So you didn't have to push me to play basketball. Okay, fine. But he said that um, every Sunday before he could do whatever he wanted to do, him and his brother had to mow the lawn. And his father made him do it, and they couldn't do anything else. And then I I, I was like, uh, because I, I could never really get either of my kids, two boys. I real I tried. I couldn't get it done. I t- and I didn't want to do it. I couldn't get him to mow the lawn. So the person I found to mow the lawn was my, my son's best friend who had his own landscaping service, Harry Gustin. So Harry was mowing my lawn for a couple of years. He was a year behind. My, he was he's actually age wise older than my younger son, but grade wise was a year behind, which we should have done with my younger son too. He's an August birthday, yada yada yada. So they were they were great friends, same age, but in different grades. So when my son went off to college, Harry was still around, um, and and we helped Harry in the recruiting process, just getting it going. And he got recruited by the University of Hawaii. You can look all this up. And he was there. Uh, he pitched there for two years. He was their main pitcher last year. He was um, all Big West. Big West, I think. Um, are they Big West or Mountain Coast Conference? West Coast Conference. I think Big West. All Big West. And there's only three pitchers that get that designation. And he was drafted in the 18th round by the Padres um, uh, last this past June in the Major League Baseball draft. And he's with the Padres right now. He got $175,000 signing bonus. and. I hope he's doing good in spring training and and will follow his progress as he makes his way with the Padres. He mowed my lawn. So now I felt incredibly guilty that I did not force my own kids to to mow our lawn. Bad dad move. Uh, Let's see here today. Uh, Russ will be on his fourth coach in four years. And uh, crazy. Wish someone would pay me millions of dollars for nothing at all. Russ a victim? I think not. No, that that whole and and you know what, man? Um, the Broncos rightfully so resented Russ. You know, saying the Broncos did something illegal. Are you getting it now? It's not illegal to have conversations with players adjusting their contract based on what's going on. It's why. When you do NFL contracts, the thing that matters the most is your signing bonus and restructuring your contract to save the team money and getting more upfront money and less on the back end happens all the time. Never mind, just you, you, you got to give up like a guaranteed. You're, you're saying, hey, listen, I will prove this to you. I will be great in 2024. Forget about the injury guarantee in 2025. I understand. It hasn't been great. Oh, no, I'm standing up for other players. Who? Who are you standing up for? Give me one other player even close to your scenario, and maybe I'll go with you. Good luck finding one. That's phony stuff to me. I don't like it. I don't like the phony stuff. If Russell Wilson truly wanted to be on the Broncos, he would understand it wasn't going great. So, okay. (laughs) Not sure if you caught it, but Joker hit the uh, TNT postgame interview with my friend in one of his answers. (laughs) That's funny. I did not get it. I did not see it. I was at the game. Um, Anytime Jokic throws into my friend, it's more or less telling you, uh, uh, it, well, it's some form of, well, you're an idiot or, okay. You know, it's one of the, it's the eye roll moments. It, it's a way for him to sort of put you in your place um, without being overly rude. 
Where can I get the recipe for Latvian lasagna? Charles Barkley said that about Porzingis. Porzingis should be so much better than he is. So much better. So much better. I mean, don't get me wrong. The guy has incredible possibilities. Mel, still about the hockey. You go to every game, but you refuse to have great on-air discussions about them. Mel, you're killing me, Mel. I love you, but you're killing me. Uh, let's see what else we got here. I have to wrap this up relatively soon. Because um, we're showing the house, and I'm going to get over to the abs game. So I got to kill some time. I'm not sure what we're going to do. Maybe we'll go out to dinner, me, my, me and my wife. Maybe we won't. Maybe I'll go work out. I don't know. I'm not going to lie. I'm a little tired tonight. It's been a, it's been a great week, an awesome week. I'm so grateful for everybody watching and participating. Oh, wow. I did not catch that. Eric Johnson traded the Flyers today. Woo. End of careers can suck. End of careers can stink, man. They can suck. How long you want to go for? So EJ is a great guy. We all love EJ. So I hope he's doing all right. Well, that's the way it goes, man. Sometimes you stumble to the finish line, but you're still a pro athlete. You're still playing. Good win for the Nuggets. Yes, Michael. Indeed. Have a good weekend, D-Mac. Wilson to the Raiders. No. <laughs> Well, he was with the Giants. He's interviewing with the Steelers, and supposedly the Raiders have interest, too, in Russell Wilson. Uh, okay. Uh, Michael, the Lakers lover, claps when the pilot lands the plane. <laughs> oh, my God, that's great. All right, well, let me let me wrap things up. By summing things up, if you missed it, the Broncos, let's see if I can remember off the top of my head. They got a deal done with Quinn Bailey as a backup a couple days ago. Low money, no big deal. They restructured Mike McGlinchey. They let go of Chris Manhurts. The McGlinchey move saves them $11 million. Manhurts saves them um, $2 million. Um, let me go to my cheat sheet here just to make sure I get it. I think I got it basically. Uh, okay. The Broncos are now, I'm reading from Zach Stevens, DNVR. Thank you, Zach. The Broncos are now roughly 18 million under the salary cap. Okay. Tim Patrick. Restructured his deal, opens up eight million. McGlinchey restructured his deal, opens up eleven million. Manhurst opened up two million in cap space. Of course, dumped Justin Simmons. Uh, did a new deal, like I said, with Quinn Bailey. There you go. The Patriots appear open to trading Mac Jones. Teams have been calling them and doing their work on their starter. Zach's Mac Jones appears to fit what Sean Payton likes in quarterbacks. Okay. Well, we'll see. We'll see. We'll, I don't love it. I don't love it for the same reasons I wouldn't want fields. It's not a long-term commitment. You don't get as many years. Um, but Sean Payton says he knows these guys better. I really don't. I, I, the, the more of these mocks that I watch, the more that I realize what the Broncos situation is, the less likely they are to move up. And if you're not willing to move up, you're talking about getting the fifth or sixth quarterback in the draft. While that doesn't bother me, it just seems that that is not what the Broncos with six draft picks are going to do. So acquiring Mac Jones, drafting a quarterback in the third round, struggling with that. Seems like a much more likely scenario for the Broncos. But free agency opens up in five days, and it's always exciting. The start of free agency is always exciting. So we'll see what happens. All right. 
I got to go. People are going to look at my house. Thank you to my friend Ed Prather at Ed Prather Real Estate. Get the details with Ed Prather at edprather.com. He'll sell your house guaranteed, just like he's helping me out. Hey, Mel, we'll go. I'm going to the Avs game tonight. So hang out with me. We'll talk all about hockey tonight. Non-stop. That is, unless I go to the Smoky Hill basketball game. Go Buffs.